So these are some of my wild flora panels uh, and canvases after um, another layer of collage has gone onto them. And hopefully you can see the richness and uh, the muddle of them in some respects. The collage serves uh, some important uh, roles in, in these works at the moment in that I'm trying to get a textural richness and I'm not wanting to labour with too much uh, paint. I'm wanting to get a patterning and a sense of different layers. And so I'm using the collage to do that. Hello, so today I'm going to share with you some of that work with the uh, collaging on the paintings. So in a minute, I'm going to uh, share some of the smaller paintings and adding that collage for textural richness. And just so you know, I'm going to be developing uh, quite a few uh, videos as I go with developing this series. And I'm going to have a playlist which is called Series Paintings. And within that playlist, you'll find all of the wild flora videos so that you can check on them if you miss them. Uh, there's another couple of things I want to say. Despite the fact that it's snowing outside, uh, it is spring and therefore I have an offer on um, for my two courses, Making Your Mark and Your Sketchbook Journey. And that's an offer uh, just for this month and it's a 15% discount. So I will put the link to those in the notes. Uh, and also, just in case you missed it, I actually now have a new website uh, which has everything on it, including my courses, uh, a shop and everything about my, my work. Um, and I'll put the link to that in the notes just so that you can have a bit of a, a, a recce of that. And I'd love to hear, have your feedback on that if you haven't already fed back to me. And thank you for all the people that have already received their newsletter and have fed back to me. And also, as ever, if you're not subscribed to my channel here, I'd love you to be. I'd love you to be able to uh, follow this journey with me and hopefully get some tips and hints and uh, information from that. So without further ado, I'll uh, get on with the video. So what I've got in front of me and what I'm going to start with is I've got these three panels and I have already got layers of collage that was the start point for them and paint. And now what I'm wanting to do is I've been looking at those other bigger pieces and I want to actually add more of a visual richness in the blocks of colour on these already exist before I paint again. And it's just a feeling I have that I want more of a rich um, kind of com sort of complexity uh, to uh, the areas using um, more pattern paper and textures. And of course I can then cover up with paint as I see fit subsequently. But it just, having looked at the other uh, paintings where I've just added more collage, I feel that these could do not necessarily with as much, but with some more collage before um, I start working on them with paint. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with this one. And what I'm wanting is to get some more visual richness into uh, these areas, this area and this area, and maybe even some elsewhere as well. Um, but I've got quite a lot of different papers and I'm just gonna get going, um, adding, not, not being too thinky about it, just um, doing what I set out to do, which is to create visual richness. So what you can see me doing is adding different sizes of papers uh, with different sort of contrasting patterns really because that is part of creating that diversity within each of these larger areas. And as you can see, some of it is thicker than others, but there's a limit to how thick I use a paper. I don't use too thick a paper. Some of this is purchase paper and some of it is papers that I've created using a jelly plate and using... Um, deli paper um, or thinner paper so it's quite a lightweight and doesn't lead to ridges on the on the surface and as you can see I'm sort of building it up and not getting too kind of caught up with being too thinky about it because otherwise you just get too fiddly um, and some of this will get covered over and some won't so even pattern paper is going on so I've got a bigger brush and uh 
poured it into a pot so that uh, it's easier to apply. Otherwise, uh, it's awkward getting the brush uh, into the into the pot. So just decanting a bit of it out and uh, nothing too elaborate. Just making sure that there's a coating of gloss medium over the surface. And I use this because I can use it for gluing down the papers and I can use it to seal in between layers and it has a good effect in bringing out the richness of the colour as well. So that's pretty much all I need to do with that one part from let it dry before coming in and applying paint. So these are the three uh, long uh, pieces, MDF pieces that I have that you saw me do the top one, add um, paper, uh, more uh, collage papers onto it. And now they just look very busy, but this was really the point of this uh, layer to get a real sort of intensity mishmash uh, so that I had something to work with. And uh, so now um, I'm gonna be working on uh, adding uh, layers of uh, paint and possibly other uh, things such as crayons and uh, often I use oil pastels but often not until the end uh, and all sorts of other things like pencils and so on like ink tense pencils and things. And then I have these smaller panels which are 15 centimetres by 20 centimetres and as you can probably see I have layers of paint and collage already on these but similarly to the larger ones and uh, the panoramic uh, pieces I've got I want to create more of a textural richness before progressing uh, so that all of the groups really of these or subgroups of these wild flora paintings have this uh, sort of richness of patterning and texture brought about by the additional layers of collage so similarly, I'm going to now get on with uh, putting more paper on these. And I'll... So I've got these two uh, that are both sort of loosely about the, the, the pink of the autumn wild flora, which is, you know, the rose bay willow herb and the whole richness going on at that time of year in the autumn. But um, I already have quite a lot of richness on here. But what I want to do is create more diversity in the areas of the pink uh, within these panels and it's that same thing of, of trying to get more of a richness textural richness and variety uh, so that i have something to work on and arguably with the small panels it's a little bit tricky because it kind of once you once i've done this layer it's going to look very clunky and then it's a, then it's the later stages where I start integrating and cutting, you know, sort of using the paint to uh, sort of simplify and, and edit. So this is a sort of a moment in time, really, which I feel is the right thing to do. And I didn't just want to have that on the big panels and then these small ones just kind of go on and on with, with layers of paint and then maybe introduce some, some collage afterwards. I wanted to sort of take it through all of the different sizes that I'm doing partly as a learning curve really and, and see how that works out but also because I do really feel that they need a visual richness so I'm going to get on with it and uh, I'll probably sort of speed up the, the video a little bit as well so that you don't spend ages looking but you get a real feel for what I'm doing so this is how I work on a bench when I've got smaller things I have these piles um, that are clamped together and I, I put them into my uh, into into drawers um, that are sort of um, part of an Ikea sort of shelving system. And um, so I have different colours in different stashes. So this is my red and pink stash. And then I've pulled these bits out of my green and blue stash. Um, and I have some other bits that had kind of been left over that I thought I'd, I might use as well. So I'm just going to get on with it. Right. So some of the papers I cut and some of them I tear. Some of these I made and some are purchased or some are from magazines. So there's a whole variety. Um, and that's really nice actually because that's what I'm kind of wanting to get. I quite like cutting this paper, although 
there's an argument that it's nice to have variety again so cutting some and uh, tearing some is, is a good way of going you don't all want all the edges the same um, in the same way that you don't want all the sizes of pieces the same you want variety um, and for some reason I've sort of started on this one and I'm just gonna just gonna carry on and in a minute I might sort of start what I think sort of makes sense because I've got a lot to do is what I've been doing is I've got sort of pairs of them like this I've been laying the paper on then sticking them once I've got what I'm kind of um, happy with so it doesn't um, I don't think it's as long-winded that way it's just a bit of a quicker way of, of doing it So I'm not really uh, changing what I do, apart from making, obviously, the pieces are a little bit smaller. But inevitably, there's going to be, you know, a, a range of sizes, but they're not necessarily going to work very well. But of course, once the paint and other materials stop overlaying on the top, then that can be adjusted and added to and uh, subtracted from and so on. So it's not, you know, it's... It, it, at this stage, I'm really just trying to get variety in it and to an extent, you know, vary the sizes and the edges, as I've mentioned in the ones that I've, I've, uh, I've shown you. But it's all sort of up for grabs at this point in time. And the main thing is to really uh, develop that sort of quality of richness and layering and texture uh, that is so important for these, especially for these wild flora uh, panels and uh, something that I think is really quite key for a lot of things. And here are the eight uh, pieces that I have just uh, applied collage to in the same way that you saw me doing for the pink ones. And I have to say they do look like a complete dog's breakfast, probably much more so than the larger ones because they can't really take all this muddle of paper. And, uh, you know, the sort of um, the composition is all over the, or all, is obviously all over the place because I've just applied lots of pa paper fairly randomly uh, and also the, the tonal values and so on. So they're kind of unreadable in, in some respects. But what I was really after was a to increase the, the you know, the, the, in, the textural interest, but also to shake things up a bit for, for these because I felt that these weren't really working uh, very well. And so I really wanted to sort of force the issue really um, by doing this and I think to that extent it's been successful. Now of course I have to unravel them and develop them uh, with paint and other mixed media. So thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe if you aren't already. And one of the things to say is that I will be doing a number of these videos to share the progress of the development of these paintings. And they will be in a particular playlist called Series Paintings, as I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, and I will, obviously not in this state, but once they develop and evolve uh, and get finished, I will be sharing uh, them for sale to my newsletter subscribers first. So I will also share the link for uh, subscribe uh, in the uh, show notes as well. So thanks a lot and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.